Hello, super scientists and curious explorers. Today, on the 14th of July, 2025, we are going on a fantastic journey to learn all about our wonderful home, planet Earth. Isn't it just brilliant? It's the only planet we know of that's bursting with life, from the tiniest ladybirds crawling on a leaf to the gigantic blue whales swimming in the deep blue sea. Our Earth gives us everything we need, fresh air to breathe, clean water to drink, and delicious food to eat. It's a special, colorful, and lively place, and it's our job to look after it with all our might, making sure it stays happy and healthy for everyone, now and in the future. Imagine Earth as a giant, cozy home that we all share. This home has a special blanket wrapped all around it called the atmosphere. This blanket is super clever. It keeps our planet at just the right temperature, not too hot and not too cold, a bit like your favorite comfy jumper on a chilly day. It lets the sunshine in to warm us up and then lets some of that heat escape back into space so we don't get too hot. This perfect balance is what makes life possible, allowing flowers to bloom and giving us sunny days to play outside with our friends. For thousands and thousands of years, this amazing system has worked perfectly. The seasons change, the rain falls, and the sun shines, all in a predictable and wonderful rhythm. This long-term pattern of weather is what we call climate. It's why we know to expect snow in the winter for making snowmen and sunshine in the summer for trips to the seaside. Our planet is an expert at keeping things just right. But lately, something has started to change this delicate and important balance, and it's something we all need to understand. So, get your thinking caps on, because we're about to investigate a really big topic called climate change. Don't worry, it's not as complicated as it sounds. It's all about understanding how our planet is getting a little bit warmer and what we can do to help it cool down. Think of yourselves as planet detectives, gathering clues and figuring out how we can all work together as a team. By the end of our exploration, you'll be an expert on how to be a true friend to our amazing Earth. Are you ready? Let's dive in and start our adventure. So what exactly is this climate change we've been talking about? The simplest way to think about it is that our Earth is slowly getting warmer, like it has a bit of a fever. This is happening because that special blanket, our atmosphere, is getting thicker. This extra thickness is caused by something called greenhouse gases. These gases are like a big, thick duvet that traps too much of the sun's heat. A little bit of this trapping is good and natural, but we are now adding lots of extra gases, which is making our planet warmer and warmer over time, which isn't so good. Where are all these extra greenhouse gases coming from? Well, one of the main culprits is the burning of fossil fuels. That sounds very scientific, but it's actually something we see every day. Fossil fuels are things like coal, oil, and gas, which we use to power our cars, light up our homes, and run the factories that make our toys and clothes. When we burn these fuels, they release a gas called carbon dioxide into the air. This gas is one of the biggest troublemakers when it comes to thickening our planet's atmospheric blanket and trapping all that extra heat. Another big reason our planet is heating up is because we are cutting down too many trees. This is called deforestation. Trees are brilliant, aren't they? They are like the lungs of our planet. They breathe in that pesky carbon dioxide we just talked about and breathe out the fresh oxygen we need to live. When we cut down huge forests, often to make space for farms or cities, we lose our best helpers in the fight against a warmer planet. With fewer trees around, more of that carbon dioxide stays in the atmosphere, making the blanket even thicker and warmer. Finally, all sorts of pollution are adding to the problem. Factories can release lots of different gases into the air, and even the rubbish we throw away can cause problems. When rubbish rots in big landfill sites, it releases another powerful greenhouse gas called methane. All these things driving cars using too much electricity, cutting down forests, and creating lots of waste, add up. It's like everyone is adding an extra stitch to that atmospheric duvet, making it thicker and cozier than the Earth really needs it to be, causing this fever. When our planet gets warmer, it causes some really big changes all over the world. A bit like when you have a temperature and don't feel quite right. One of the most talked about effects is what's happening at the very top and bottom of our world, in the cold, icy places like the Arctic and Antarctica. 
The extra heat is causing the huge sheets of ice in the glaciers to melt much faster than they should. This is very bad news for the amazing animals that live there, like polar bears and penguins, who rely on the ice to hunt for food and raise their young. All that melting ice has to go somewhere, and it flows into our oceans. This means that the sea levels all around the world are slowly rising. You might think a tiny rise doesn't matter, but over time it can cause big problems for towns and cities that are built near the coast. It can lead to more flooding, making it difficult for people to live and farm in those areas. It's like slowly overfilling a bathtub. Eventually the water is going to spill over the sides, and it's the same with our oceans expanding onto the land. The planet's fever also changes our weather, making it more extreme and unpredictable. This means that some places might get a lot more rain than usual, causing big floods, while other places might get much less rain, leading to long periods of drought where it's hard to grow crops. Storms like hurricanes and cyclones can also become much stronger and more powerful because they get their energy from warm ocean water. This extreme weather can be very dangerous and disruptive for both people and animals who are not prepared for such powerful events. Finally, all these changes have a huge impact on plants and animals. They are used to living in a certain climate, and when that changes too quickly, they might not be able to adapt. Some plants might not be able to grow where they're used to, and animals might have to move to find new homes with the right food and temperature. Sadly, some species that can't move or adapt fast enough are in danger of disappearing forever. Every single creature and plant has a special role to play in our world's delicate balance and losing them makes our planet a poorer place. After hearing all that, you might feel a bit worried, but I have some fantastic news for you. The best part of this story is that we have the power to help, and you can be a real-life planet hero. You don't need a cape or superpowers, just a little bit of care and some brilliant habits. One of the easiest and most important things you can do is to recycle. By sorting your rubbish into paper, plastic, and glass, you help save energy and resources because it takes much less power to make new things from old things. Another super easy way to be a hero is to save energy at home and at school. It's as simple as flicking a switch. Remember to turn off the lights when you leave a room and don't leave the television or your computer on standby. Ask your parents if you can switch to energy-saving light bulbs, which use much less electricity. Every time you save energy, you reduce the amount of fossil fuels that need to be burned, which means fewer greenhouse gases are released into our atmosphere. It's a small action that makes a really big difference when we all do it together. Why not get your hands a little bit muddy and plant something? Trees are our best friends in the fight against climate change, so planting a tree in your garden or a local park is a brilliant way to help the earth breathe. Even if you don't have a big garden, you could plant some flowers or herbs in a pot on your windowsill. Plants are great because they clean the air by absorbing carbon dioxide. Plus, they make our world look much more beautiful and provide homes and food for important insects like bees and butterflies. Lastly, think about how you travel. Instead of always asking for a lift in the car, could you walk, scoot, or ride your bike for shorter journeys, like to school or a friend's house? This is not only a fantastic way to cut down on pollution from car fumes, but it's also a brilliant way to stay healthy and get some exercise. Every step you take and every pedal you push is a vote for a cleaner, healthier planet. So, you see, every one of us has the power to make a positive change and help look after our amazing home. Together, we can keep our Earth wonderful for everyone.